policy this meeting until July 9th. Thank you. We have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Next order of business is site plan review application for Austin Prep School. Staff want to give us a brief update or just want the applicant to start in? Um, so we held a few DRT. We held the DRT last week to go over any final concerns with the applicants. Engineering is working with them directly to kind of get any of their concerns out there and fixed up. but. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward application to renovate the dining hall and front patio area, and I can let the applicants kind of take over from there and explain in more detail. Sure. Good morning, Mr. Stark. Um, my name is Brad Latham. For the record, I'm here with James Hickey, He's the headmaster of the school. Uh, with him is, uh, is John Weber, uh, who's a financial officer of the school. Uh, Terry Sullivan and Sean Willett are uh, the architects. They're also here this evening. And Mark Pazzarelli, who's the landscape architect. Uh, basically, the overview of Austin Prep is in the continuing quest to beautify the school, make it more attractive, uh, make it more usable for the students. And I think you can see that's ultimately an objective in what's before you this evening. I'm going to ask John to give some uh, general comments and then the various uh, uh, skills and professionals can make comments in their areas. Um, so previously we've uh, discussed the internal work and that's been approved for the dining hall and the kitchen renovation so that's mm -hmm. underway so the other part of the work is the exterior work it is a patio dining area to expand that uh, space for our, our faculty and students and then it's also an entryway in the front of the building to make that more open more user friendly more attractive um, one of the items that we're going to do is close off the front of the building from traffic. That's a safety-related issue so that uh, kids and cars aren't uh, mixing. You say close off. You mean uh, protect, not we're going to be able to enter that at all? Right now, there's a driveway that goes in front. We're going right. to curb both sides of that so that cars aren't driving through. Across the entrance. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. That's a main thoroughfare for students who are going from that building to other areas. So it, it, it's not a good use of that as a thoroughfare for kids. Okay. So, yeah. You changed the circulation. Yeah, I saw that. I only had I only had two comments, and you can do with them what you will. The uh, the brick wall that you're proposing, the seating wall, the detail doesn't look like it's reinforced. It doesn't look like there's any reinforcing coming out of the concrete foundation into the backup of the CMU. And for the same reason, because there still is car traffic there, I'm wondering whether you wouldn't want to reinforce that wall a bit. I see. Yeah. Because that accidental car moving towards where students might be. Yeah. Um. I'm Mark Mesrelli, I'm the Project Landscape Architect. Um, we can certainly add that if, if that's something that the town would require us to do. Um, it's just a thought, yeah. just looking at it, it didn't look like, you know, a few vertical bars. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that as a, a hardship or anything in any case, yeah. But I think the first time you hit it with either a car or a plow, it'll probably slip off. Okay. Well, there, there is a curb, there is a vertical curb separation sure. in a walk in a landscaped area before you get to the wall. I know, but um, people are pretty bad drivers nowadays. It seems like they're going through <laughs> storefronts <laughs> constantly. And because it mm. seems it's going to be a pedestrian, I'm going to have students out there. Thank so. you. Yeah. And my only other comment is, I didn't see a way for, I don't see an accessible path from that area to the front entrance. It looks like you have to go in through the dining hall or that second exit to the right, but you couldn't go from that area to the front entrance. Uh, well, it's not intended to be an accessible route. I know, I know, and that's why it's only a thought. Uh, I see right. it, and then kids will disperse, and some might go in through that front entrance, and I don't know how many um, challenged students you might have, but they would have to definitely go through the dining hall. I don't know how you intend to use it. Yes, thank you. We, we, we noted that as well. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, it's a nice project. Uh, this is kind of the way we used it at my school. 
you know, kids would typically gather in the dining hall before classes whenever there was a free period. So it's a good mm -hmm. use for the space. Not this school. <laughs> uh, comments from staff or uh, board? No, I, I did a quick uh, drive around the whole uh, property this afternoon because uh, it had been several years since I got down there. And it looks a, uh, a good plan. The school building is in excellent shape. Yeah, I mean, safety-wise, it still looks like you've got fire access all around. So I didn't have a problem with you cutting that off. Robin? Rachel? No, I actually don't know the site very well and I didn't have a chance to go by, mm -hmm. so it was hard for me to picture it, but mm -hmm. when I could tell, it was beautiful. My only question is, how is the parking right now? You're losing three spaces, and I know that's probably a fraction of percentage, but I'm not certain what your parking looks like today with the students. If I could, historically, of course, there's no town parking requirement mm -hmm. for schools or churches and all of that. Uh, the schools are a little shy of the number of the current, the new zoning requirement of parking. Mm -hmm. uh, however, this is part of a program, and they do their next phase, they're anticipating adding additional parking to it. There's net loss of three places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I go by that I go by Willow often. Even when it seems like there's something going on, I don't notice cars spilling out onto Willow Park. They just find a way to park on site. Yeah. So as long as fire is happy with fire departments after with access, mm -hmm. they seem to be managing it. Okay. Hmm. Engineering still has some open issues? Um, I don't think they're open issues anymore. You guys might be able to give more detail on it. I didn't get the chance, I never got the chance to put out an official memo out there, but at the DRT, um, he expressed those concerns and it looks like the applicant has managed to include all of those concerns on these plans. They were just regarding notes and additional information for grading and whatnot, so it looks like they've been addressed on the plans as far as I can tell. Okay. Any comments from the public? Oh. All right. Did you know if I can jump to the draft decision? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. so, sure. Um, one item that I have is on signage. Uh, you probably saw from the front entrance way, uh, they have three words written in Latin above each door. Mm -hmm. To the extent that's considered signage, we'd like to have that approved tonight. Yeah, I don't object to that. No. There wasn't a notice for this, right? Did I miss that? That there was. Is there a public notice? Yes. Okay, well, I move that we dispense with the reading of the public notice. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yes. All right. Was that the only comment you had, Brad, on the decision? Was that the only issue you had? That is it. Thank you. So, in the conditions, uh, I guess we should close the public hearing then. Okay. I mean, right? Yes. Uh, move to close the public hearing for the site plan review at uh, Austin Preparatory School. Second. So there is a condition here that says no signage has been approved. Mm -hmm. So I can omit that and I'll add it to the findings. Um, the three Latin words above the entrance will be included. Yep. Yeah, there, there is currently Boston Preparatory School in the front that may be relocated, but still the same signage. Yeah, but not a priest. The name of the school is right. 
currently in front of, I'm, I'm James Hickey, I'm the headmaster, currently on the awning of the school, it says Austin Preparatory School. So as the project gets approved, we're going to have to replace the sign. There's, there's some modifications being made, but we anticipate it being the same size that it is now. The reference to the three Latin words is the school's motto, which would probably go somewhere um, you know, on the front entrance so that people can identify the school's um, heritage as they come onto the into the building and onto the property. Okay. There's truth, charity, and, and unity, etc. in Latin. Right. That would be the same as on page 13 of the plans, correct? Is that the picture of the yeah. facade? Yes. Page 13? Page like the, the best view is <coughs> here. And you're saying the Latin word to be down here. If you go to the next page, you'll see it. There. So each door has a different yeah, 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 Gotcha. So we should basically add it to the findings that the mm -hmm. uh, signage will be modified um, to include the mm -hmm. school, 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 school model. model. School model, yeah. Yeah. Do you guys want any cut sheets when they propose signs just to see? No, because. Well, I don't. Right. I, I can't imagine right. they're going to do something so tacky. Yeah. Like, you know, tacky <laughs> stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> it will require a signed permit. So um, that'll be something you'd have to come and talk to the building inspector about. The, which part of that requires the permit? The words on the glass? Not the words on the glass. As long as that meets the window sign regulations and the sign bylaw, there's no permit required, but there are specific um, how large the letters can be, and all that is in our sign bylaw. So, as you begin to think about both types of signage, it's probably worth coming in and having a conversation with the building inspector so you're clear long before you start fabricating anything of what zoning allows and what it doesn't allow, because that'll just be regulated by the building inspector. And I'm assuming there's no lighting designed for these, correct? There's no lighting. You're not going to put a, a spotlight on the front of the building. You're not going to have goosenecks showing down on the Austin Preparatory School. No, not any private yeah. proposed lighting proposed in the, in the overhang there. Yeah. A safety yeah. thing to general illumination, but no, mm -hmm. no sign lighting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. on the decision other than changing the language for the signage? Um, well, I'm not sure actually that the change is required because the authorized signs includes signs on property occupied by religious or educational uses. Yeah, I didn't think it was in there, but... So I'm, I'm not sure that we actually need the uh, explicit permission. Well, it, anything that's going to be attached to the building would just trigger a sign permit. And David's so reading it to say it doesn't. Why is that? <coughs> oh, are you constructing something and hanging it on the building? Is that what we're talking about? The Austin Preparatory School? No, not so much the. Not that's so going to be the in the the masonry. Okay. Yeah, it's it basically in all zoning district signs on properties which are protected. Um, the sign permit is not required. Yeah. Okay. Well, I say we just put a finding in that says the signage will be generally in keeping with the drawings submitted. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Limited to the building face there. Yeah. And then I can right. put a new sign out at the street, so I think you know that might require warrant review. Something yeah. down there, but back back up in here, I don't think you can see it from the street. Um, can you? I don't know if you can see it. You, you might catch it. Yeah, you might go so along the drive way back. back. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, there are some waivers requested here. Utility plan, photometric plan, drainage calculations, stormwater pollution prevention plan, and traffic study. So <coughs> engineering is satisfied with what they've proposed for yes. the swapping of pervious and impervious? Mm -hmm. Can we want to vote on each of these individually or in total? These waivers? Probably in, in total, I would imagine. Sure. Does anybody have any objection to those waivers? No. Nope. <laughs> okay, so move that the CPDC uh, approve the requested waivers for the site plan Second. as presented. All in favor? <coughs> if there's no additional questions or comments, we will take them. No. Move that the CPDC approve the site plan review decision for the dining hall renovation and new entry of the McLaughlin Hall at Austin Prep uh, Preparatory School. Uh, second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't think that they were required to comply with requirements because of that. Plus, I thought there was a ex no, no, I, I exception yeah. for, I don't know, I forget what you call it, but when the building name is built into the building. Yes and no, because when Reading Co-op did that, they had their cast, their cast right. stone mm -hmm. element on their building over here, right? Yeah. Uh, They're going to do a problem with split the building up. Yeah. Actually, you were there for that when they wanted to put the sign on the second floor for yes. the new tenant. Mm -hmm. okay. They had a sign. If it had said uh, Caritas on it or something, that would be said. Yeah, so they have a 40 section. Right. We made them cover up the back. Yeah. I don't know that, I don't see anything here that says that they are. Yeah, I didn't see anything in the previous. Okay, I just need a second here to So just because they're organized, doesn't need to add a door and they have to put it. Okay. All right, so we have planning updates and other topics. And the first thing here is a lot released for Sunset Rockland. Does that yeah. mean a lot released? Yes. So I only put it in your um, file because I wasn't sure that we needed more copies. Um, okay. In there is the original affidavit. Yeah. Um, I had a statement from 1998 or 99, I believe, that mm -hmm. said the lots were released. Um, but we have residents trying to sell the lot and can't because I guess it hasn't been released yet. So they were looking to do this as early as May 25th, but obviously the meeting wasn't until today. So. Um, that's where the affidavit came from and to kind of hold them over until now and where we will hopefully get to release the lots. Sure. So I think, try to explain that from the very beginning, right? Developer comes in with a proposal for a subdivision and each of those lots is proposed to be a certain configuration mm -hmm. and we approve that layout. Mm -hmm. And then I think the lots are released as they as they meet certain criteria, right? So that they can start to sell them. Right. Mm -hmm. And but there's usually a record of that. Yeah, but well we also have the individual uh, plot plans because the the state is recording the uh, the land map, if you will. And when you subdivide, you create new new lots. So that's when we sign the six copies or whatever it is of the. Uh, the new plot plans when those, when those are created. I was surprised to see it mentioned only plots 5A and 6A 
Yes. Which are in the original. I believe are the only two that haven't been released according to the lawyer I was speaking Right. To. So it's no, unclear to me there. why when I read this. It's because it says lots 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 were released and in 98. And I sent him that and told him that, but it was not satisfactory, I guess. So. True, because it's called 5A and 6A, and so they right. must have done something different. Right. Either divided it again, found more land, and made more lots. <laughs> Or something. Something. Yeah. Hmm. So there wasn't a record that the town said, okay, go ahead, You're, you've met your obligations, there's no liens, or whatever. You can sell that mm -hmm. property or the house at this point. Mm -hmm. Interesting to know, though. Right. Why is it 5A and 6A? Right. Well, I, the, is there a, was there a subdivision that we missed somewhere along the way? or Not that I could find. No. Yeah. Okay. He was under the impression that it was under that same subdivision. Okay. Because I know that, for example, Strawberry Hill Lane, mm -hmm. is that what it's called? Off of uh, Walnut, okay. on by us. They put in, there's like an old farmhouse, and then they, they renovated that, but then they put in a whole cul-de-sac with a bunch of houses. There were these little pieces of land that I didn't think were buildable. In the time since that went in, you know, who knows how many years ago, they found two more spaces to stick houses. So I don't know if they got pyramids for that or if they had always planned on it and just waited that out. It just seemed like an odd place. It could mm -hmm. be the same situation here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I believe Julie mentioned to me that there shouldn't be structures on it if they didn't get released yet. So it's a weird situation. Well, the, the, the curiousness is the, the lot five versus five A. Right is sometimes two piece, two separate uh, boundaries. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't have a chance uh, today to go and, and dig into the GIS or whatever to see if there was a, some indication of what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah, let's look at the, let's bring that up and take a look at it. I wanna see where there's empty spaces right here. Uh, is this near where that whole fiasco with the uh, accessory apartment thing took place? I'm not sure. So it is sunset rapidly. At the corner? I'm imagining that. Mm. So I mean, there's a brook there for sure. It, it's, I think it's the other, the other side of Franklin Street, what you're thinking of. Okay. There's the brook. Yeah. That's towards the top. Not the circle now. Honestly, I don't know where I'm going to here. That's got to be the school right here. Mm -hmm. Let's look, at that plan again. Let's look at the, uh, the map. It almost looks like it's that last two lots at the top left. Oh, A. A and A. Yeah, that would make sense. Hmm. How you get to those? Right. Circle. There it is. Boy, they don't look like they have frontage. That's what I'm saying. How <laughs> you get to them? I mean, no, no, they have frontage. I'm saying I don't think they, they don't look like they have the legal frontage. Right, what's the dimension of that? What's the radius of that circle? See it right here. Well, GIS may not be, it, it's close, it may not be 100%. Sure, but I mean, if it measures 30 feet, you know, yeah. we know it's supposed to be 60, <laughs> that's one thing. If it measures 55 feet and we're supposed to be 60, then we know we're probably within the margin of error. Mark up. Looks like 94 feet across. Everybody's got a machine to look at here. So this part is the school right yeah. here, once you hit that line. Hmm. Let's see those guys. I guess this guy has that. This one has. Yeah, 
Well, these these two houses. Oh yeah. What is that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay, so I mean, a quarter of that, whatever that comes out to be. This is right. I'm not going to figure it out here. Yeah. Right. It's also that house on the back, on the back, far back. See that one on the right side, about halfway, just below the brook, on the right side. Right. See how that one's sort of set back. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That piece could have been split. I don't know whether they would have started numbering this. That's not so before the brook. There's a house that's close to there. That's this one, so maybe there's something you can find back on this side right here. Yeah, that's that house that goes way yeah, back. Way back then, right there. Yeah. So the one that you've got outlined there is which which lot? This is lot 11. Okay, so where is 5A? <laughs> that is the question. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering because it doesn't look like it. We may call it one thing in GIS and it may be something else. Right. Legally. Yeah, because it doesn't look like there's a five here. Can you look at the property record card? It might say something on it. On the left. Unless it's down below. There's nothing there. Okay. Well, I mean, our only obligation is to decide whether it should be released or not. Right. And there's nothing here that tells us that it shouldn't be released. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, it's you can tell by the owner because the owner is Cataldo. Yeah. This would be the first one you were looking at, so you tiled up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a document here that looks like a lot of these for 5A. Am I supposed to have one for 6A as well? I keep on this. Oh, you've lost my stuff. Andrew. Sorry, what was it? I said I only have a lot release here for 5A. That's because the other ones were released already. Right. Oh, okay. I thought we were doing 5A and 6A. Um, um. He mentioned that we could do 6A. They're only looking for 5A, but he said 6A has not been released yet, so I wanted to okay. kind of ask about mm. that, see if we should or not. But the closing is for 5A. Right. So we could do this one. We could do a little more investigation and see if we can actually find out which okay. ones yeah. they were. Yeah. The time-sensitive one is the 5A. Okay. So if if they split a lot and put a house on something that they weren't supposed to, I don't know how they would do that. Right. A lot of steps involved. <laughs> in to start building a house. Um, the new owner is up is obligated to deal with it. Right? I mean, mm-hmm. nobody else. I would imagine. I don't even know what that means. They would. Well, there was something similar they, on um, South Main Street. If you recall, somebody bought a lot um, on Hopkins? No, further up. But right at the corner across from the gas station. And for years they tried to get it built, but they couldn't. And it required a change in zoning for them to finally be able to put a house on the oh, lot. Oh, yeah, that's on south. 
South Street. South Street. Corner. South. Yeah, 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 yeah. The double. Oh, yeah. 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 That just went out last year. So, yeah, the owner, if they purchase it, has to know whether it's a buildable lot or not. Well, this has a house on it, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're trying to sell. Oh, that's what I didn't understand. Oh, so they're trying to sell the existing house. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, I think I missed that part. So something is already built. Yes. But underlying records say that it hasn't, basically, that it never was released. It's just a lot. That lot yeah, was never released. Really okay. okay, so it's not that they're trying to put a house in behind here. No, yeah. no. I think just I think we all got confused by the back lots there. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, no, this is because they want to sell this house and there's no record of the lot having been released. Okay. Got it. Got it. Done. So. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. <laughs> is it a motion? <laughs> Move it to be um, CQBC release for um, for sale, I guess. Release the lot 5A of the Sunset Rock Lane uh, according to the definitive plan dated uh, July 1997. Second. Okay. Okay. Now we have to sign this, right? Yes. Right. And that I will have the applicant bring to the registry of deeds. Now it looks like this needs to be notarized. Who's going to do the notary? Been doing this in the morning or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Now we have a discussion for the 40-hour design guidelines. Talk to us. So I can kind of start a little bit. Um, you asked last meeting to maybe look at more urban areas that had design guidelines for smart growth districts and the one we found Jean mentioned to me shortly after was the town of Danvers just approved their design guidelines and I added a map that they included in theirs um, just for you guys to see because they have this interesting residential transitional frontage zone which let me just read that definition to you which those identify um, it identifies certain street segments as places prioritized for low to moderate density residential uses and building types to create a compatible transition with surrounding neighborhoods. Um, they allow only certain types of development in those zones, uh, workers' cottages, paired houses, multifamily live work, and allow maximum density for building types permitted on parcels fronting one of those segments and they have it as 12 units per acre and building height would be three stories or 35 feet um, when you're fronting those zones so I think it's similar to how we feel about Green Street and a few of the other areas kind of in the middle of our downtown I believe this was added to the zoning map so I don't know if that entails town meeting or whatnot if we looked to go in a similar route um, but I think it's something to kind of look forward to as we look for similar areas and similar types of development so 
Um, they had a very strong design guidelines um, front to back and also in their zoning bylaw. But besides that, and maybe going in a little more depth on things like lead requirements and stuff, they were similar to ours in a lot of ways, just like all the others. But there certainly was language that we could perhaps use from there. So what's the enforcement mechanism? They have a design guideline. You said they brought it to town meeting. Or they got I'm not sure if they went to that. town meeting or not. That's what I'm what they just mentioned that it was an official part of the zoning map and officially regulated and zoned. So I imagine that goes through town yep. meeting. Um, but but they're not sub districts. It's part of the map. Right. The map identifies these areas right. yep. and then the design guidelines enforces enforce them. Yeah. Design guidelines, not the zoning. Um, it's actually in the zoning bylaw. It's in the zoning bylaw. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this, this, the one, two, three here in the caption does indicate it's a subdistrict. It's a sub yeah, subdistrict. Okay. Okay. The thing that I, I, that I find fascinating about this is that they've got the front, what they call the frontage zone. Right. And that's what I'm talking about. They do have sub-districts along with those frontage zones. Yeah, and, and the, the basically the concept of a frontage zone is something I think would be very useful for us. Right. I mean, in the downtown area. I agree. Um, however we achieve that. <laughs> so are you familiar at all with the zoning, with their guidelines and zoning? What happens beyond the front of this frontage? Are they allowed to step up? Or is it for the entire development on that parcel? I believe it's for the entire development on that parcel, but to be honest, I'm not. Okay, that's okay. It's just something we need to look into. Yeah. Mm. By the way, I'm just going to open it up for public comment as well. We might as well just have a dialogue here rather than wait for us to vent. If you have something. Hey. But, um, and this you, seems you like a pretty workable. Mm -hmm. This seems like a pretty workable idea. Yeah. Okay. You know, feel free to move forward if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you the last time I was in Danvers, by the way. I was trying to like, is there a downtown? That's what I'm trying Maple to Maple Street's the downtown. Yeah. Maple Street is Maple the downtown. Street's the downtown. Um, Hobart Street is a kind of like almost like a Haven Street, not mm. not quite. Um, well, Danvers is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I discovered when one of my sons had a uh, night watchman job over there. <laughs> um, but Gene, you you were at Danvers, right? I mean, Peabody, but I know Peabody, this I know this area very well. well. Definitely have to drive through and see mm. what it feels like. Off the top of your head, though, what do you think is least similar to us in this area? Well, um, the the only difference with this kind of an approach is, um, in my mind, Danvers is um, a more urbanized area. This this section of Danvers. Um, and we've been talking, not that we can change, but we've been talking all along about leaving the zoning that we have and dealing with what we're trying to do in transitional areas through the design guidelines. Because that allows us to do it in this format as opposed to having to go back to town meeting. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to go back to <coughs> town meeting, we would have to schedule um, public hearings Usually we have it in July, mm -hmm. and then we finalize in August, and the warrant closes in September. So it's pretty unrealistic to think that we could even be in a position. If we wanted to go back to town meeting and modify, it would be unlikely that we could do it by November. Just not enough time. Yeah, see, I think our, our efforts are better served. We'd come up with the same language. That's the thing. Right. How do you, the can you get there a different way? Get it, you know, by the time we were ready for town meeting, we might actually have something. Be done. Ready. Yeah. We'd never get ready for town meeting. Rather, by the time town meeting comes around, we might actually be ready for our design guidelines to be updated. Mm -hmm. So, 
I think it's more manageable to just do what we've been talking about and deal with it in the design guidelines. But I still think, if I'm remembering correctly, that DHCD has to sign off on the design guidelines. Mm -hmm. sure they so that will yeah. take some time as sure well. Want something in there. Yeah, they're not going to just let us. So to just so to translate the the concept of these sub districts, we wouldn't be doing because that has all of the different regulatory steps. But yes. some of these aspects of the frontage zone, we could build into the design guidelines, right. which are not don't need to go back to the state. Well, they have a lighter weight approval process. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's good. I mean, just I'm scrolling through the area, and it's not a downtown, and like there's nobody walking, there's no retail to go to. There doesn't seem to be any edges. Yeah. <laughs> is it really like that? Or I mean, this is I'm I'm on this I'm on, I'm looking at the zone that's the retail I mean the residential transition fronted zone, and I get it in terms of the houses, but I don't know. There's a no sidewalks, and b I don't know what else. I guess it's because it's it's abutting this industrial pieces here. Yeah, so it's Putnam Street or North Putnam Street. North Putnam Street, yeah. So North Putnam Street has on one side, or in some areas, a couple of double and triple deckers, and then industrial. It looks like. So yeah, they've obviously targeted that to try and clean this up. Right. Well, it's yep. something better than just a sort of residential, yeah. you know, big commercial Back thing on the, the opposite side of the street. Body. Yeah, mm. right. But I think the the concepts are there, and the language are probably right, but mm -hmm. some of the design guidelines may not. I just, I just think that they're going to be looking for different types of development. Though. Right, because they had like this one as an example of when it sucks. Abrupt transition and building heights adjacent to one story building, which I didn't really like the one story building that's like hard. I think we could more relate that again to residential instead of just one story. But well, that's not off. I mean, right. let's think about the corner of. Um, Green Street and uh, the one at the train station that has the auto body at the corner there. Green and high. I mean, that's a one story, with, and that's going to have the new development right near it as well. So that is for a woman right there. And similarly, keeping going, you've got another auto body and other one-story buildings going back to those apartment buildings on the corner that also have development potential in that corner by Washington Street. So it's not, you think, thinking about those abrupt transitions, right. I mean, honestly, the way I look at it is it's not optimal now. Can you bring the map back up, the Sanders map? So is that um, MSTND, that's their overlay district within their 40R, or is, or is their 40R defined by this entire outer boundary? I believe their 40R is defined. Yeah, that's it, huh? Their, their name for it, we call it ours the Downtown Smart Growth, DSPD. They called it the Maple Street Traditional Neighborhood Development. Right. Over, I don't know. It's a <laughs> so what's so traditional about that, though? The name. Or the, you know, <laughs> in the similar, like, so those triple deckers are probably some of the original houses. They're traditional. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like, okay. I'm searching for what's the traditional could be that that was a... But not livable. traditional, like... Capital T versus <laughs> small T. <Correct>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay. I mean, I kind of like this approach. It's what we were heading towards anyway. Right. So we were trying mm -hmm. to do this. We could look through their language and see how they did it and then mm -hmm. figure out how it relates to ours and mm -hmm. write our language like that. We need to identify those areas, though. Mm -hmm. I think we started to. Right. And I think we were looking at, I should have got the big map I was kind of drawing on earlier. An interesting thing about this one is also that if you look at the existing zoning, underlying zoning, the, the blue up there is zoned industrial. Yeah. But yeah. the actual use appears, appears to be almost entirely residential. In one and two here? Yeah. Yeah, except a couple of places that, like the Even bed. at the edges. Yeah. Because it's commercial buildings now, or am I misreading this? Are all the buildings just the same color? No. I think all the buildings are the same color. I don't yeah. think it's going to be possible by this map to figure it out. I think you have to train. Yeah, yeah. The, the zoning is the industrial commercial one, commercial 1A, but the actual use is, is industrial. quite different. <laughs> and they really only meet sort of on the, on the upper left side here, where the residential sort of comes into the industrial. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's across the street. Yeah. Or at a clean edge. So there's a few, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's probably 10 properties that are right sort of tucked up in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that might be harder to do than the cross the street stuff. If Tony's an expert at this point. <laughs> Cross the street. Cross the street stuff. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. I like that. Okay, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, does staff have comments on the last time we left this? I know that Jonathan was going to take a look at everything and, and hopefully he has his comments. Yeah, if I can now. Sure. Um, I, I had mentioned to, um, to Andrew, uh, thank you by the way, Andrew, for giving us that, that heads up, mm -hmm. um, that I had made some comments for consideration uh, by the Historical Commission, and we just met uh, Wednesday, so we haven't really had the opportunity to vet okay. my comments. So um, I could maybe provide some of them tonight as we go along, or maybe what I would probably prefer to do is to hold off and give them to you um, after we've had the opportunity to, to vet them internally. Yeah, that's fine. I should also say, um, I think I mentioned this before, um, this is this is a really difficult um, process to, to be involved in because I can't make any edits to the to the document and it doesn't appear that anybody else has been able to I and mean, the only the only edits that I've seen are these little uh, and I don't have Adobe Acrobat on my, on my computer so that's probably part of the problem but um, it seems that what what people are doing is they're adding comments in, um, rather than actually making edits or additions into the document what I did was with with Tony's able assistance um, I or, or he uh, walked me through converting it to a Word document where I could make edits. But the problem is that the Word document um, pretty significantly modified the the original the original document. So um, it, it's really become a a really difficult process where I have to put up the PDF document side by side with my Word document, and folks at the Historical Commission have to do the same thing in order to see to see the full PDF document with your comments, Nick, and, and Andrew's mm -hmm. comments, and anybody else's. Um, and then I've made my edits in the Word document, which are which are clear to people, but but you won't be able to see the the full PDF version. So I, I don't know how to fix this problem that I have, and I don't know if anybody has a suggestion, but. So I did move all of your comments into the Word document, even though they're labeled under AM. They are your comments. Um, My comments. Meaning Nick's comments? Nick's comments, yes. Um, just so we have them all in one as a working document to go through. 
Um, if it's okay, I could potentially email it to you. I don't know about posting it on the town website for everyone to kind of have their hand at it, but if approved, I could potentially send it to you and then we can keep your comments also included in ours and historical comments included with ours as well in the Word document. And that, that would be great for me, and I assume it, with your acquiescence, I could share it with Virginia and with the, the historical the story, commission yeah. so that we could then pool our comments, and then I'd be happy to send that mm -hmm. back to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's going to happen is that you'll, you will only take their comments individually and then put them into your master document again. So okay. So it won't just be overwriting our document right. with whatever somebody sends you. Right. Yeah. So you're controlling all mm -hmm. the comments as they Yeah, I'll have my main document yeah. saved uh, on my folder and file. Sure. I didn't have any problems with it. I did it the old-fashioned way with a pencil and <laughs> circle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go there. <laughs> well, I mean, all of the editing tools on things like Bluebeam or Acrobat are meant to replicate that. <laughs> so, so it's got all the typical editing <laughs> tools in there. You're just picking them from a menu. Yeah. I also saw a, a, a Pam Adrian, who um, is from the Green Street group and who's been at these meetings. She she did notify me. I don't know if she notified you all that she was planning to be here, but she's not. Um, she's having some allergy issues, so she wasn't able to, to make it today. But she provided some comments, I think, Andrew, to you as well. I have not heard from her or received them. Okay. Um, will gladly do so and review them, but I haven't received anything yet. Okay. So. I just took a look at them. It was very late late uh, this afternoon, early evening. Mm -hmm. um, she was showing up in the dark room as little <laughs> yellow pop-ups. So. <laughs> well, we're still, we're sort of still in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not near the end. Mm -hmm. Would you all also, the document that you're looking at from Danvers, is there any way that you can um, electronically send that also to me? I can send you the link or yeah. PDF if I can download Great. it. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Last time we met, we started talking about having some more of these uh, vision statements, I guess you want to call them that, from the beginning. Mission statements, vision statements. And, um, the last time I went to town meeting, <laughs> <laughs> I was reminded by a former CPDC Chair um, about our master plan and how it really should be referenced more often. So mm -hmm. I took a look at it. It definitely needs to be updated. I think it's 2006 at this point, so it needs some updates. However, there are seven themes, I think, in the mission statement, and there are 24 objectives, and all of those have things to do with like character and identity and economic development, natural and cultural, natural, historic and cultural resources, services. This is the master plan. This is the master plan. Yeah. And so I don't even know if we need to repeat some yeah, of the stuff. We could just that. say that in keeping with the master plan, right. with the yeah. themes of the master plan, hmm. but there's a lot of effort that went into this and it identifies mm -hmm. a lot of areas. It talks about historic uh, neighborhoods and what we're trying to preserve, what we're trying to develop you know, what the town wants to be. And there was a lot of input, I think, from a lot of different people since before I got involved. Mm. Um, but I, I think it needs to be updated a little bit. Um, I think well, at the time, only the two large housing developments, mm. you know, the, the Archstone development and the other one were in the works. Mm. So we've talked, we've talked about updating the master plan. Um, the price tag to do a comprehensive update is well into six figures and with the override um, it didn't seem like the timing was no, I agree. <laughs> was this done by a consultant? I thought this was town, done only by town back in the olden days um, there, there used to be money around <laughs> to do this stuff Okay, that's gone I what thought really this was just groups of residents that got together it can be done them. that way it was the original one was because yeah. I sat on that yeah, this one was um, MAPC. Sure yeah, <laughs> MAPC in those days had some money. They I think they called it EO four eighteen. It was an executive order that the state mm -hmm. had money available, and okay. the MAPC would come in and sort of shepherd it along. Um, 
maybe similar to how we did the economic <coughs> development plan, except we funded that in part. Um, so there's a lot of talk on the planners list serve about who's doing a master plan, what does it cost, and the number that I'm remembering is about 150,000. Okay. So that's where it kind of gets difficult, and we have updated components of the master plan. We've done two housing plans since the master plan, and we've done an economic development plan, and we've done a bicycle and pedestrian plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've where does the traffic piece fit into it? I mean, is traffic and parking. Yeah, traffic and parking study. So the Nelson Nygaard 2009 study is currently um, we're doing a uh, an update. Not an extensive update, but a, um, a series of traffic counts in the downtown. We're wor actually working on that now with Nelson Nygaard. It wasn't a, a couple meetings ago we talked, there was discussion of a more comprehensive planning study. Yeah. Future plans. I'm just wondering if there's some economies of scale here, whether well, building into at least kind of a review of the mission statement and the traffic piece at the same time. The issue again gets down to money. And w the only reason we're able to do what we're doing now with Nelson Nygaard is we have a little bit of end of the year money that we can you know, do something. Yeah. Um, this is something that the economic development director was working on before he left last year. Um, but it all gets down to, you know, how much, how much planning dollars can we realistically go to town meeting and say, you know, this is what we'd like to budget for, for planning studies? But I guess that's what I'm saying. So I, I would guess there's an appetite for a traffic study and a parking study. Probably reverse or yeah. parking and then planning. And so wrapping some of the cost of looking at aspects of the master plan as part of that yeah. would be a like an abbreviated better plan. sell. I think I think what you're saying might have some validity. The master plan still reads well. Yeah. The vision, if you look at the vision statement, these are our goals. Right. Sense of community, retain natural resources, provide for housing diversity, business friendly atmosphere, right? Town-wide connections, excellent school systems. So none, none of that's going to change. I think what might change is the focus on where some of this development goes, given what's already been planned. Right. And since uh, 40 hours actually, or something like 40 hours in here. Yeah. You know, talking about developing a downtown for to liven it up and to add some housing in that area. Yeah. That was already part of it. I think it's more about where is this going to go, and maybe if there's a mechanism that's different than what was around back then. But mm -hmm. 40B is the same, right? That hasn't changed. Yep. The economic development plan did identify priority development areas. So we have a little bit of that from the economic development plan. Um, so that's good. We can always reference that. Yeah. Hope when we're getting to the master plan about topics like Broadly, the, yeah. The economic, about the uh, priority zones. Uh, that's what I had. That's mm. the efforts of my work for this last time. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, or it keeps interfering with the stuff. Other comments? Nothing. Um, I guess I'd like to understand what our process and timeline I think that's another piece of the vision that I wanted to understand. That's kind of what's our, is it board's goal? Like, what do we want to have when? Hmm. Well, some of that is that we have uh, right now a, a fairly substantial number of uh, projects in in process. I mean, basically, still moving forward. Right. We've got Gould Street. We've got the, the Postmark. We've got um, the Reading Village. We've got the the, uh, the Main Street thing. And, and it's we need if we're going to make some reasonable changes, we need something before the next right cycle shows up. We, the next wave. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, we've got. 
Um, the 40B over at Lakeview Ave is another thing which is going to show up somewhere. Uh, it's close enough to the the downtown district, if you will, it's going to have some in, some overflow impact. Or be connected to whatever happens at DPW. Yeah. Well, the DPW <coughs> realistically is out a couple of years. Right, and but the, it's closer to that zone, so if it gets put on a back burner, it probably will be. Yeah. Live when that starts to activate over there. I mean, we might. Um, if we're lucky, we'll see some more activity at, at the, the 128 uh, marketplace. Then we had the, the project proposal for tearing down the, the building next to the train tracks, the strip of the building. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see some proposal uh, in that area again. The last of the historic piece of it, of course. Right. <laughs> Where is this? Uh, Top by my <coughs> basket. Your goal is Jim is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so the back end of that, the building kind of sticks out. Yeah. And I think their proposal was to just take down that whole section, mm -hmm. which is underutilized. Yeah. And probably falling apart when it looks at it. Mm -hmm. It's the railroad tracks. Yeah. It would give them more parking and probably more storefront that they could potentially sell. Like, the slots get pretty deep so that they can start splitting them. Yeah. Start servicing the other side. Not Yeah. <laughs> it's not great. I mean, that whole thing would be such a great right. biotech and medical, you know, healthcare type area. Yeah. yeah. There is some healthcare there. I know that that'd be the hub for it, right? Yeah. And then I keep yeah. talking about this station. <laughs> Reading station should be right there. <laughs> and it's a parking garage would attract people from other areas that have to jump on the commuter rail. This is a big giant plan, right? A garage with a transportation hub right there. Yeah. Would how do you get to the station? Little shuttles? No, there would be a there would Cre be a stop there. Creating a new stop. Oh, <laughs> yeah, smart. Right, because people would jump off the highway, get right into this, this um, either go to work in one of the taller buildings that would have all kinds of office and yeah. lab and other stuff mm -hmm. like that going on. And then, if you had to go into town, you could park in a garage and not worry about having to find parking. Mm -hmm. And then it would alleviate mm -hmm. some of the traffic in the downtown from that. Except but I wouldn't close. The main station, no, otherwise. So you'd have both. Yeah. I think you'd have the same sort of arrangement in the downtown for sort of residents, you know, that kind of discounted parking, if you want to call it that. And there are places that have multiple stops. I, I mean, in knowing that there's a handful of um, healthcare pieces that are there, if one other comes up, I think you could hit a tipping point. Right. Those companies are just looking for They space. just like being next to each other. It's so odd. <laughs> uh, somebody just spent $60 million, I think, on starting some incubator space so that startup yeah. facilities mm -hmm. like that would have a place to just jump in right. and start doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of money there. Yep. So but I don't, I don't so know how we would incentivize it as a community. We don't really have that kind of power. If the state has, you know, tax incentives and other, all we have is zoning. <laughs> You know, we can say, okay, you can do it here and it's faster. Right? Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's quickly developing that the incentive, of the, the uh, how you incentivize it is say, it's not off of Washington Street in Woburn. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually get there. <laughs> you have to sit yeah. at the traffic light. <laughs> no, it, it has great access and it doesn't, it wouldn't have to come deep into the downtown. Not that I'm trying to keep people away from downtown, but I'm trying to keep the commuter traffic that's just trying to jump on a train to get to Boston or get to work, then they could walk the downtown. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good plan. You should do it. <laughs> you should do it. We called that the Green Triangle, didn't green we? Green Triangle, yeah. We had a map about a year and a half ago, and um, we showed the 40B project and all the potential of that area, both DPW and One General Way, connecting to the downtown as a really a potential redevelopment area. Um. <laughs> it's just could, sitting there. You take a take a hint from the the seaport and put it in a cable car. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you've been down there, down there is crazy, right? That whole area is just they're building constantly. It's not, yeah, it's unrecognizable. Yeah. 
So a little bit of that would be nice. But back to the any? original. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so given that, so what is you right. know being ready for the next wave is next year two years no, like are we i mean are we going for the next can we put a tag down on the next town meeting or i mean that the, the the spring town meeting if we have anything we have to present as part of this by then we can work backwards the from there town meeting, right we yeah. could just make a presentation about where this stood if it wasn't finished at fall you mean under meeting. reports yeah. yeah yeah so when's our next meeting month july, july, 9th, july 9th. i believe are there any short-term goals for that meeting? Well, I mean, I think we should look at the Danvers piece. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan, you? if you get through your comments before that, you could send them in and we could see them before the meeting. I, I, I appreciate that. I, I had anticipated that. I think uh, we had talked about having a, a workshop and I, I was looking toward the July, I figured it would be for the July meeting. Okay. So I don't know what your other time timeline is on this, but I would anticipate that we could get our comments to you on the, on the existing draft, not necessarily on the Danvers mm -hmm. draft, mm -hmm. uh, before that July meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we look at that, and then I mean, read through the read through the guidelines, and if there's something you like or don't like or want to experiment with, I would I would edit it. I mean, is it possible so for three things to happen: historical commission comments, rest of us comments on this draft, and the Danvers pieces. So we end up with two versions of a draft. We have one with all the comments and then one where you try to reconcile and create a clean copy mm -hmm. and that's the next pieces of what we talk about mm -hmm. i'm just wondering like okay, is well, that too aggressive or? i don't know so what's your workload look like then because um <laughs> <laughs> that's the question right we're gonna don't do forget this fourth of july right before the yeah. meeting yeah it's kind of picking up a bit i don't see why i couldn't try my hand at it um, and see what I can come up with in terms of language for our own guidelines. Um, but I couldn't really promise anything extensive. So why don't we step it into two parts then? Mm -hmm. For July, <coughs> collect comments. Your role is just to add the Danvers portion to mock it up. Yep. And to make sure that everybody's comments are in one draft. Mm -hmm. We review that together. You, you know flag the biggest questions mm -hmm. that's what we go through as we go through the biggest questions mm -hmm. and then for the next meeting we create a clean copy right where we look at it as if it's a brand new document mm -hmm. but our role too should I'm sorry our role too should be to look at the Danvers yes go zoning and see if we have edits or comments right. that we would send in as our own copy. yeah so mm -hmm. yeah please do okay. yes is conservation a part of this conversation is there a need for them to be involved or to have any input? I, I don't, I, this is my first time having really seen this, so I don't know how extensive they are. But given our extensive time for us, I don't know if that issue comes up. Well, probably it, it probably comes up on a uh, individual project or uh, because the conservation uh, input is necessary later in the, the actual development. But it's it tends to be um, site specific because we we have the um, tower mortgage building formerly pizza town formerly get a gas station i mean this obviously they've got a conservation uh, issue because of, of the the wetlands but i mean it's almost always site specific rather than something that we can put into a uh, generic Here's, guideline in general you're speaking directly to the 40r design guidelines or just cpdc in general well 40r specifically in regards to south main because i know there's that one well, that small green area yeah well, we're not in so we're not in yeah south main we're just talking about the downtown area just downtown. Yeah. For, for these guidelines we've sort of we've drifted so um <laughs> We talked about the green triangle, so um, that they're they're very much necessary, and we work very closely. Conservation and planning are always back and forth talking about things, so that dialogue is always happening. Um, and then we have the project specific um, review and coordination with conservation. Um, but yeah, we 
we do a lot of roundtables with staff on, you know, what does this mean? What does that mean? Um, but in these guidelines, I think that for the urban, I'll call it the urban core, um, that's probably less of a conservation issue. Right. Even though one of our guiding principles mm -hmm. is promote sustainable development. So whenever somebody comes to us with a project for the downtown smart growth, we are, we're looking at the energy efficiency, yeah. what they can do to greenscape it, what they can do for water management. You know, we push lead to some extent, right. but not, not certification, yeah. but goals. The energy code today, and you can speak to this better than I can, but um, all of the projects, the 40B projects, the 40R projects, the larger projects, they're all code reviewed. And one of the codes that they're reviewed against is the energy code. So by code, they have to be, have an element like 30 of- 30% better than baseline or something. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot so. built into that code to ensure that we're meeting that sustainable energy efficiency. So I do want to pick up on something that just kind of came to me. So I think if we exercise this muscle and figure out how to do this design guidelines process and figure it out, the next wave could be South Main Street. I mean, with the well, demo mm -hmm. lot over there yep. and a couple things, like the next wave it's, it's of development be. could be there. So getting it right on the urban core, the next thing to do is how do you apply what we've learned mm -hmm. to do a similar process with some, you know, principles for South Main Street so that this time we kind of <laughs> catch it before everything shows up. Yeah. I did, uh, when we came up with those South Main Street guidelines, I did an FAR exercise up and down the street, yeah. you know, to see how you max it out and what that right. means and those lots are so narrow. Really? That and there's such difficult grade issues as you right. pull away from some of those areas that you, know, you end up with a very narrow slot mm -hmm. to develop in. You know, you definitely have to share parking. You definitely have to share access as you start to stretch those things out. You'll get a little preview on July 9th when we have the conversation with Perfectos. Um, they want to expand their parking, parking. <laughs> and I've got an email list of neighbors. Um, I'm sure, I'm guessing they'll probably be here at the meeting. Um, they're very concerned about the impact of Perfectos on uh, Avon Street, for Avon example. Street. Mm -hmm. Of overflow parking and um, so when you develop on South Main Street, right up against these residential neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you always have to imagine that there's some impact. Yeah or conservation impact because of all the wetlands and pieces and town land behind it. Well, they yeah. can't go that way, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's... <laughs> <laughs> One thing they can't do is go into the river. Yeah, the conservation is, is a little bit clearer, but when we approve site plans and uh, the plans, are, you know, make, make good sense and are, you know, thought, comply with zoning, and then there's some added impact like there is now at Perfectos right. with employees parking on Avon Street, um, that's where it gets tricky. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just still think it's a good plan. I am, I live on, off of South Main Street, so mm -hmm. I, I think that, you know, anything else that comes in needs to have a different thought process right. than what was there before with all the parking in front and terrible, awful signage. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we looked at the portion of South Main Street closest to the railroad track, so the, the most northern part of South Main Street, as one of the priority development areas. South Main Street is, is in the priority development area, but that, that section we really looked at because when you think about it, it's very walkable to the train station in the downtown. You mean right. the, let's get rid of McDonald's place? <laughs> well, I was thinking about the other side of the railroad tracks. Let's, let's move it. Uh, <laughs> that's fine, yes. Let's move just, the car wash. <laughs> yes. But Fix you, the traffic. You can imagine, you know, that that is an area that would be ripe for a totally reimagined layout of, of buildings mm -hmm. and pedestrian connections yeah. and yeah. that kind of thing that you would you really are very close to downtown and to the train. Yeah, I mean, but I also think, you know, again, if some of the, the larger developments start working, some of those older housing kind of small mm. apartment units, 
someone may want to come in and, and spruce it up or to, you know do something like mm. that and some of those I think may to me those are actually most likely to go first because if the the model of small unit housing is working mm. yeah that's um, true but there, you know there's also that building that the, uh, the owner voluntarily renovated it's like a small cottage on the left on the uh, southbound side three or four after the car car wash oh yeah did a nice job cleaning it up but yep. that's actually a oh, yeah, pretty large great. yeah pretty large lot for what's on it right now mm -hmm. it's just a realty place though right uh, um no it's probably either a hair salon or that's realty, right? i think it is a hair something here yeah. which one the one with the um it's a uh, Cape Cod style psychic home. Psychic or the one that looks like a Cape Cod style home? That's it was yeah, that was a beautiful yes. renovation. Yes. Yes. yes, they did a great yeah. job on that yeah. one. Yeah. Yep. So there's a couple lots on that side. And I guess that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, yep. I don't think they're teardowns. I don't, I just think that someone may come in and say, like, I'm going to take what I have and do a little bit of a flip. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, one, of, one of the things that we may want to put in the back of our mind is the, um, between the train tracks and uh, Minot Street. There's a couple of cul-de-sac clusters in there yeah. that uh, somebody might do something with. I mean, it's a beautiful area. I was gonna say, that's a nice zone though, so mm -hmm. that would be a protected area. Right. Yeah. Washington Park, I mean, the whole, yeah. I mean, that whole area is mm -hmm. gonna have some, um, Increased emphasis yeah. when the uh, additional housing goes in, both Gold Street and the Reading Village. Yeah, okay. But yeah, so I do think, you know, just being thoughtful about if we figure out some of these puzzles, it's worthwhile yeah. to be thoughtful proactively. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, one question <coughs> on the next wave. I thought you at one point you said that the downtown is almost at max for units. That we had we a. We talked about how many we thought the infrastructure. For the infrastructure. Support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're looking at infrastructure improvements. Um, so, given the current infrastructure, yes. But if we were to expand on what's available, then I think we could handle more. Okay, but. Parking is par and parking and traffic is part of that, and you you can improve parking and traffic like you can water service. Yeah, it'll mm. be interesting to see um, the utilization studies that we're doing now will give us some data on what it's like now versus in 2009. Um, of you know, are people staying longer? Or is there more use? Is there less use? It's just. I'm imagining it's going to be more, but without the data, it's hard to say. Um, and the other thing that we always struggle with is what planners call right size parking. You know, we mm -hmm. found out that 30 Haven didn't actually need all 78 parking spaces. So the 1.25 parking ratio um, is a little high based on that actual use. So when we think about mm -hmm. other developments like Reading Village that are mostly one bedrooms, um, it'll be interesting to see what the actual demand for parking will be. That's true, although I would say that 30 Haven and Gould Street, when all the parking goes under, pretty much the footprint of the building, um, there's no reason they can't have an excess of parking because if we really are going to have commercial, for example, that'll probably be used by them, right? So the extra spaces at Haven, at 30 Haven, mm. benefit the commercial spaces. Because those tenants want to be able to drive in and have a place to park and go to work. So the Haven Street developer ended up buying a parking lot off-site. So um, the commercial the, down, the employees that work in that building, I think, are mostly parking in this off-site parking lot. Okay. Um, because there's a lot of employees now that it's all medical. Mm, right. There's a lot of employees. If it were retail, yeah. it probably wouldn't be that many. Exactly. So they're not parking back here. Well, that's the town's lot. 
Yeah, they have their own private and there's, lot. There's uh, regulations on how long you can be in there. Yeah, well, there's, there's also the Reading Cooperative employee mm -hmm. lot. I don't know what they, I don't know. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one they bought. Yeah. Well, good, at least it's being used. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate that it, it sort of went in. Yeah. We really need this, we really need this, and the next thing we know, nobody needs it. They were using it, and then they moved. Right. Yeah. I mean, they should have foreseen that. <laughs> Anyways, it was an investment. Anyway. Okay. okay. Um, other comments on this? So we're going to, you're going to try and get your stuff reviewed and in. We're going to look at some things, get that in, and mm -hmm. try to compile it all into a document. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> For the next meeting. July 9th. July 9th. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, did you send us a link to the uh, Maple Street thing? I can. Certainly. Please. Sure. Yeah. Sure, you can find it. Because I do have Acrobat on my machine. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I actually, I stopped paying for it. They're going <laughs> to. I like a lot better. What's it called? Bluebeam. Bluebeam. Yeah, it's pretty good. Because you can do actually. You can do studio sessions, which means that 100 people could be editing the same document at the same time, mm -hmm. and it tracks all the comments. Wow. So you wouldn't need to compile them. They'd That's all be in there. Good. And you can't change somebody else's comment. What was that called? Blue Beam Studio. Mm. It's an alternative to Adobe's Acrobat Pro. Mm. But it sounds like it needs a SharePoint server to run. Probably. But there's probably some cloud-based. Oh yeah, if you have Office 365, you can have a yeah. SharePoint server. Actually, you could do it with Office 365, right? You could just share. You could just share out the document. <laughs> yes. So we could do it that way too at times. Same thing. Well, I'm sure there's rules about. Same how thing they have with the like Google mm -hmm. Drive we use too. Yeah. We yeah. Do Same that. thing. Yeah, we could do it there if we had to. Mm -hmm. Just as a, not as your master document perhaps, right. but as a document where everyone can start adding comments, and right. then you could manage those mm -hmm. comments mm -hmm. so that your master document never gets corrupted. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I just have another small planning yep. update um, for Johnson Woods. We did have that bond for them to restripe the parking lot. Um, they sent me last week pictures and I went out there to review. Um, they did do virtually everything we've asked and there was a few small things left where they needed to move some curbing in order to finish um, the correct size of the parking spaces. So. They mentioned that that would be done this week, I believe, so I'll keep on top of that, but going pretty good, so I just wanted to update you on that, that they're at least doing that. Good. Uh, any updates on um, the Main Street site that is waiting for their curve cuts from the state? Uh, is that right? 268 yeah. Main Street? Yeah. I've just gotten a couple questions. I haven't heard anything. Okay. Did they expire soon when they're down or no? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. They came in they came to modify the parking, so. Is that a year ago? Yeah, they probably have a year. Right? It's two years? That's two years for the permit? Yeah. Yeah. Two years. So there's no triggers, there's no tools when nothing happens. I mean, Perfectors is a perfect example of nothing happening for a super long time. Well, they came in, well, it's sort of, it, it, it's tricky because um, Perfectos was such an incredibly difficult site to develop. Yeah. And for whatever reason, the property owner followed a path that none of us could understand. <laughs> And when we did bring down the hammer about the vacant property, because it was a burnt out building, yeah. um, it got really, really ugly. Um, court fines and fees and the guy coming to Selectman's meeting and complaining that they were being mean to him. I um, mean, we said, when, can, when do you think you get the building down? Uh, two weeks, okay, we'll give you two weeks. And then he goes, you're picking on me. It just got so bad. So it's like, 
you walk that fine line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it is it is hard to develop these sites. Um, but by the same token, yeah. how do we how do we um, how do we encourage it to go forward? Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone has the same goal. We want it to go forward, mm -hmm. not be stuck. And getting it unstuck is very tricky. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. When you hear an applicant say that we're being difficult, like we want the property to remain <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> vacant mm. and underutilized you know, <laughs> and ugly or something. <laughs> No, with perfectos, what what's stopping you? We want to unstop you. I actually created a log yeah. of every time the guy came into the counter, and it's about four pages long. Mm -hmm. Had a question about this, changed that, <coughs> did this, did that. You know, it's like it's. But so similarly, is that is the bridal shop? Are they showing up all the time, or are they no, like dormant? No, but I guess what I'm. They're thinking. not dormant because they came back to the board, and they said we want to modify. And they got their approval, and so it almost reset the clock a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did bring in new engineers, so yeah, they obviously shuffled their team a little bit. Yeah. I would imagine they're working on their documents at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, unless the financing fell through that they had planned on trying to finance it. Mm -hmm. My impression was they needed to get the approval for the curb cuts from the state and then they were, you know, trouble ready. Yeah, well, the, usually you just move forward with the plan because nothing else could change. Right. The curb cut's going to be, like, within that range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess they have two, that's the thing, right? Yeah, they, they, they come do. come back and save one, but right. that would kill the project. As it stands. Yeah. They'd have to put the entire building over to one side and try to put all the parking on one of the other sides. Yep. And there's a for sale sign on the Smith Oil property. Mm -hmm. right. So that's another one that mm -hmm. likely will. I've met with people that were talking about doing something there, mm -hmm. I believe, in the parking. That'll be an, that'll be an interesting conservation challenge because that's Big time. Mm -hmm. quite a bit. Of yeah, yeah. Down. Chuck sat with them and, and went through that. Yeah, a fair amount of remediation is is involved. When the uh, remember the electric car guys, they called me up like two days before Christmas, however many years ago that was, and said, "Yeah, we're buying this property." And I said, "Oh, do you have your team assembled? Do you want to set up a meeting?" They were like, "Team? Why would we need a team?" <laughs> I was like, well, your development team, your architect, engineer, oh, we don't have anything like that. <laughs> oh, I said, okay, well, um, maybe we ought to meet, talk about zoning, talk about conservation. No, that's not necessary. We're just going to come in with a plan. <laughs> We're going to drive our cars onto the first floor of this building, by the way. <laughs> we don't need an architect I was, or a I, structural engineer. <laughs> they were on their way going out of business when we moved here, and I remember being like, that is a very odd business model. It's just strange. <laughs> I asked them that model. question. I said, who would be your customer? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm not following it. And they said, um, people that are driving hybrids. This was eight years ago. <laughs> oh, I said, okay. Um, but then with e-cars, at the end, they said, we can't believe how much we had to spend on site work for this project. Do you know how much we spent? I can only imagine, yeah. So it's, it's hard because the entrepreneurs think a certain way. And they don't think or about not. they don't think about <laughs> all these things. You know, they they want to just open the thing, open the business. Yeah, should have looked at 128 marketplace. Exactly. <laughs> <Good spot. laughs> all right. Okay. What else? 
minutes. Uh, just a minute. I made just this, some small edits that you sent to us. Yeah, the other I sent day. a bunch of edits, but then as I was reading through them, I had trouble with a lot of the language. Yeah, the sentences you clouded, I didn't and edit at all yet, just to try to get clarification. So there's, there's, there's language that doesn't read well, and then there's language that doesn't, to me, convey the intent of what some people are saying. And so I think if everyone could look at these again, just read them with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I need to take another look at them. It was it got late last night when I finally started editing these. But I know that there's some comments in there like that that says that um, Rachel made, and it doesn't sound like what you said. Um, I don't know if we can get into them now. This is a lot more involved. Right. But read them. Make sure that it sounds like what you thought you said. Okay. And um, yeah, read them can... for syntax and things like that. Yeah, there is one typo. One typo. That I found. <laughs> That's pretty good. Typo That's page seven. Good. DHDC is a, not the way. It's not the uh, state body. Oh, DHDC. Anyways, I thought we'd just have another go at these mm -hmm. and try again next time. Okay. I don't think anybody's rushing to read these over the summer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we can post them with big giant drafts on them. Um, that way we can at least get them up on the website in draft form. Okay. If that's okay. Um, sometimes sure. we get emails from people that say, I was looking for the minutes and they're not there, and they get very upset. Sure, okay. I don't think I don't understand how difficult it is to type these things up. <laughs> <laughs> That's new word of the week is opined. <laughs> yes, everyone is required to use the word opined at least. <laughs> Yeah. Anything I'm, else? I'm doing really resume stuff right now. Oh. Uh, you know, it's all the source all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you.